वेलकम बैक एस द फ्री एफ एस आर फ्रेम जनरेशन मॉड डी एल एस एस इनेबल जस्ट रिसीव द न्यू अपडेट ऑफ यू टेस अगो इन द फॉर्म ऑफ वर्जन थ्री इट्स अवेलेबल ऑन नेक्सस मॉड्स वेबसाइट आई शो इट्स अपडेट लॉग द बिल्ड इज ऑल्सो अवेलेबल ऑन गेट अप द मॉड नाउ सपोर्ट्स एफ एस आर वर्जन थ्री पॉइंट वन कम शेड विद न्यू कैम नाइन मॉड विच इट सेल्फ गॉट अपडेटेड टू वर्जन जीरो पॉइंट वन जीरो जीरो इन केस यू डोंट ऑलरेडी नो डी एल एस एस इनेबल यूजेस न्यू कैम नाइन डी एल एस एस जी टू एफ एस आर थ्री मॉड In order to enable FSR frame generation in games that support DLSS frame generation, added feature support for FSR 3.1 upscaler, which will be implemented by OptiScaler mod. OptiScaler supporting FSR 3.1 is not shipped yet, so the FSR upscaler part is still outdated. FSR version 2.2. I'll be just using XCSS version 1.3. Best part of DLSS enabler is that it works on any GPU, whether it's from Intel, Nvidia, or AMD. It does not matter. And we can use XCSS on any GPU as well. DLSS enabler also includes Nitex OptiScaler mod. You can use it to replace DLSS upscaling with XCSS or FSR upscaling. Updated NV API 64 proxy from Fave Mikau to the latest version, which disables logging NV API calls by default. In this video, I'll be comparing its performance with the official FSR 3.1 implementation in four Nexus games running on my ROG Ally. I have the set one extreme variant of this device. Now I'll be honest guys it's a bit difficult to observe the difference in image quality between these two FSR frame generation implementations on a small 7 inch display but I'll try my best to highlight the differences quickly highlighting FSR 3.1 changes FSR 3.1 upscaler reduces ghosting improves conversion speed and reduces flickering now I have already compared the image qualities of FSR 3.1 DLSS 3.7 and XCSS version 1.3 upscalers Did the testing on a 24-inch display? DLSS 3.1 is still the best, but I was surprised to see Intel's XCSS version 1.3 upscaler producing a better-looking upscale image than FSR 3.1 upscaler. The thing is, FSR upscaler struggles to render the fine textures properly, especially when they are viewed from a far-off distance. They appear to be flickering. For example, textures like power lines, fences, and grills. Next feature: frame pacing for FSR frame interpolation has been improved. For an even better experience, FSR 3.1 adds the ability to decouple the frame interpolation process from that of upscaling, so it can be used with any upscaler the user desires or at native resolution. FSR 3 mods had already decoupled the upscaler from FSR frame generation, so not exactly a new feature if you were already using the FSR 3 mods. FSR 3.1 introduces the AMD Fidelity FX API, which makes integrations of FSR future proof so applications using this interface can be updated to upcoming versions of FSR more easily this is a very useful feature now we don't need to wait for the game developers to update the version of FSR 3 in their games we can do this ourselves just need to download the latest FSR 3 DLL files and paste them in the games directory where the original DLL files are present override DLSS and XCSS upscalers already support this feature additionally the SDK now supports the Vulkan graphics API with a note that frame generation may require additional data it's in early stages first i'll be running ghost of sushima with official fsr 3.1 using a 25 watts manual profile all three power values set at 25 watts full hd resolution cpu boost disabled set the umi buffer size to 5 gb resolution full hd upscaler set to xcss game supports xcss version 1.3 upscaler using its quality preset First, I'll run the game without frame generation. Pacing disabled. Low preset. Motion blur then set to nil. Internal settings enable free sync and free sync from here. That's it. Using a custom afterburner only to show you the performance metrics. For better transparency, I have enabled afterburner's frame pacing graph. Stutters will be highlighted as spikes on it. There's Jin. I'm at Golden Temple. Here, FPS is around 40. And observe the choppiness. We are out of ROG LS VR range. That is 48 to 120 hertz. I'll just enable FSR 3.1 frame generation now. Display frame generation on. Do it the same sequence. FPS increased to around 60. Now when I move the camera in complete circles, engine's head flickers. It's difficult to observe this artifact on a small display. See, and this artifact is not produced when I move the camera 
normal speed like this there's definitely some flickering going on and just sprint around 56 to 60 fps can definitely use official FSR 3.1 in this game ok now I'll be using DLSS enabler 56 to 62 FPS in this sequence I just installed the mod that's why this message popped up we'll set frame generation to DLSS frame generation upscaler set to DLSS which is basically XSS version 1.3 Rest of the settings are left as this. Load the same sequence here. FPS is close to 70. That's really good to see. Slightly better performance using TLSS enabler. Moving the camera in complete circles. Waiting for Jane's head to flicker. Very difficult to observe the flickering. May not be present using TLSS enabler. I think. His head flickered there for about half a second. Let's check out the performance now. Sprinting. FPS never dropped below 60. That's really good to see. I'll be honest, DLSS enabler is running better than official FSR 3.1 and Ghost of Tsushima. Now I'll be testing the next game. Now I'll be running Marvel Spider-Man at full HD resolution. I'm just set UMA buffer size to 6 GB. And run in settings for Spider-Man. Free sync and V-Sync enabled. And that's it. First I'll run it using official FSR 3.1. Upscale method XCSS. Game supports version 1.3. I'm using Quality preset of XCSS, frame generation disabled for the time being, VSync off, full HD resolution, full screen mode, medium preset, motion blur and film grain strength set to nil. This is Spidey. It's a bit difficult to simulate the exact same sequence in this game. Big open world for us to explore. I'll be swinging around the objective, the yellow marker. FPS is close to 50. This is the game running without frame generation. 45 to 50 FPS. I'll just enable it now. Scared that guy. Frame generation on. Official FSR 3.1. Yeah, I can observe the added amount of smoothness. FPS is close to 84 now looking for some graphical artifacts Spidey's character model is rendered properly Game's HUD is also rendered properly no flickering going on HUD flickering issue is not present in any game that supports FSR 3.1 Let's swing around Seventy-seven to eighty-eight FPS. The streets are more demanding on the hardware. Yeah, seventy-six FPS. Now I'll use DLSS enabler. Okay, forgot to mention Spidey's shadow is flickering. It's on the ground below. Yeah, very difficult to observe this on raw galaxy mode display. See, I just installed the mod. Now I'll change the settings. Set up scalar to DLSS, frame generation to DLSS frame generation. XSS version 1.3 of scalar will be used, and FSR 3.1 frame generation will be used. Medium preset. Ignore these prompts. Okay, during the loading screen, I can see these weird textures. 
there is Spider-Man and immediately I can observe some graphical artifacts around his character model, garbled textures. These artifacts were not present when I was using FSR 3.1. Now you can reduce these artifacts by dropping the game's resolution to 720p. Still it's a problem with the mod. I tested DLSS enabler on my PC that has an RTX 2070 Super GPU. Didn't observe these artifacts. Pretty sure these artifacts are present due to Allies AMD based GPU Radeon 780M. Performance is good, roughly the same as official FSR 3.1, like 78 to 86 FPS. It's a bit difficult to simulate the exact same sequence in this game. Frame pacing graph mostly a flat line. Really impressed by the game's performance on Allied. It's running at full HD resolution. Better to use the official implementation in this game. Now I'll be testing the next one. I forgot to mention again Spidey's shadow is still flickering. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart for this game. I'll set the UMA buffer size to 7GB. It's better to just drop the resolution on ROG LI. Return in settings for Ratchet and Clank, AMD FreeSync and VSync enabled, that's it. For this game I won't be using Afterburner, it can cause the game to crash. Instead of Afterburner I'll be using AMD's own performance overlay. Upscale is set to XCSS, game supports version 1.3 using the quality preset of XCSS. Frame generation disabled for the timing, full HD resolution, VSync disabled, low preset, motion blur and film gain strength set to nil. There's such a check out the VRAM usage. 7 GP, oh my god. FPS here is close to 50. 45. I'll enable frame generation now. AMD FSR 3 frame gen on. Apply the setting. Keep an eye on the FPS counter. FPS now is close to 70. Can also the added amount of smoothness. Okay, when I move the camera in complete circles, no graphical artifacts are produced around Ratchet's character model, that's good to see. It seems the game runs in a sluggish manner when we go through these rifts, maybe a game effect. 70 to 80 FPS. And look at that <laughs> VRAM usage. <laughs> okay, combat time. FPS did not drop below 60. Lifts are getting open randomly. This is crazy. This sequence is very demanding. Full of enemies. Good thing wrong and I did not crash. 7 GB UML buffer size setting work. Very good experience using the official FSR 3.1 implementation. Now I'll be testing TLSS enabler. Back everyone. 62 FPS. Just install the mod. We'll change the settings now. Upscaler set to TLSS, which is XSS version 1.3 frame generation set to DLSS frame generation which is FSR 3.1 low preset full HD resolution there's Ratchet ok I am observing some graphical artifacts around his character model we observed some similar looking graphical artifacts in Spider-Man as well these artifacts were not present when I was using official FSR 3.1 implementation performance is roughly the same FPS is close to 70 Just do a speed run. Game's HUD is not flickering. You can reduce these graphical artifacts by dropping the resolution. 62 FPS here. VRAM usage is slightly lower using DLSS enabler. Oh, 
okay even here FPS did not drop below 60 same performance using official FSR 3.1 and DLSS enabler now I'll be testing Horizon Forbidden West for this game need to set the UMA buffer size to auto enter and settings for the game FreeSync enable, VSync enable that's it full HD resolution, XCSS subscaler, frame generation disabled for the time being VSync off using the low preset, motion blur stand set to nil there's Aloy yeah, here FPS is around 30 as the game is running at full HD resolution to improve the performance just drop the resolution to either 720p or 900p you can observe the sluggishness now I'll enable official FSR 3.1 display frame generation on apply resume the game yeah I can observe the added amount of smoothness very easily observable FPS here is within a range of 45 to 50 not observing any artifacts around Aloy's character model on the left and right edges of the display you can observe a screen tearing like effect it's present in every version of FSR 3 frame run I beg your pardon frame generation even when you use the mod it's basically a technique used to prevent the flickering of the game's interface ok now I'll install DLSS enabler just install the mod change the settings now upscaler set to DLSS which is XCSS version 1.3 and frame generation set to DLSS frame generation full HD resolution low preset need to add one launch option under launch options just add this line of text reflex emulation equal to on yellow with the same sequence and performance is roughly the same 45 to 49 fps but i'll be honest with dlss enabler game seems to be running in a choppy manner not observing any added amount of smoothness this issue was present prior to fsr 3.1 release in this game it seems only the official implementation fixed the frame pacing issue after enabling frame generation FSR 3 mods still haven't fixed this issue I tried using Nukem 9's mod on my RTX 2070 Super GPU faced the same problem even on my desktop PC let me just disable frame generation and get a good idea about the frame pacing issue caused by frame generation frame generation of C not a big difference after disabling frame generation now I'll switch to official FSR 3 frame generation implementation now I can observe the added amount of smoothness it's so better to use official FSR 3.1 in this game time to conclude the video I observed slightly better performance in Ghost of Tsushima using DLSS enabler in Forbidden West official FSR 3.1 produced better performance than DLSS enabler the performance was roughly the same in Spider-Man and Ratchet and Clank ripped apart however there were some noticeable graphical artifacts in these two games when using DLSS enabler so that's it for the video guys I hope you find it useful thanks for watching and have a nice day